This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 17th day of November in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. The 26 visiting Haitian nationals who have been placed in protective custody by the police are demanding that they be released as they were not victims of any human trafficking or smuggling ring. The Haitians were taken into protective custody last week and transferred to the Hugo Chavez Center in Berbice. In a video released by the group to news source today, a spokesman denied outright that they were victims of any smuggling or trafficking ring. He explained that they arrived in Guyana on a Caribbean Airlines flight from Barbados and were admitted entry by immigration without any issue. We all come legally in the country. So we have our passport, we have our tickets, our return tickets. We get our passport stamped from immigration. So now when we were going to Linden, to go to Joseph apartment. So we have such kind of situation where the police, they just came to us. Some of us were at the hotel, Palace de Leon, and they just went to the hotel. They took all of us. And now you can see the situation that we have, a very bad situation. We don't have food, we don't have water, we don't have, there is no way that we can survive from that situation that we are living today. The spokesman reminded that like Guyana, Haiti is also a member of CARICOM and the CARICOM treaty allows for free movement in member states. He noted that they were given up to three and six months to stay in Guyana upon their arrival. So they are finding the accusations of smuggling and trafficking difficult to understand. We are human. We are part of the CARICOM. So we can come to this country and be in this country for three months and even six months but we don't gonna stay all that time because we come here to make business we come here to do tourism to go shopping and we get someone here from guyana to help us out to tell us exactly where we go someone to transport us we get all the service that we paid for and now exactly we have this kind of situation where we get treated like animal like animal as you can see here we never leave this kind of situation right now we need assistance from everyone who's watching that video on all the social media because we need assistance and he also complained that they have not been getting any information from anyone but they have been following the reports in the local press about their situation we come legally in the country there's no reason for, uh, for them to put us on the custody, as they said. And this situation here is not custody because we don't have a good treatment. The way that we get treated by them is like animal. Like we come in this country to do bad things. No, we don't come to do that. We come like human, like we right to come. If there was a problem, since we come directly from airplane, in immigration, we were gonna have some problem. But since we come legally, we don't have any problem. So now they are saying that we come from Suriname. When they have our passport, they can see exactly the stamp and everything. How could they say that we come from Suriname? That's everything that they are putting on the news, which is bad news. We need someone, we need the authority to take their responsibility and do something. In a statement late last week, the Home Affairs Ministry announced the arrest of a number of persons as part of an investigation into allegations of human trafficking and smuggling. Those arrested included a bus driver and a hotel owner. They have since been released from custody. The ministry has refused to release additional details on the issue. But senior sources in the Guyana Police Force have confirmed a news source that all of the documents of the Haitian nationals are in order. For a number of years, Haitian nationals have been traveling to Guyana to make their way over to Brazil to take up farming and other jobs across there. More news coming up in a moment. Guyana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. strength. And now is our time. Time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. 
Ravina's and Water Street and Anand's and Regent Street just received a new shipment of Lederet in over 16 colors. Lederet can be used in a wide variety of applications including covering speedboat seats, cargo, and keeping commuters dry. Ideal for minibus and car seats, Lederet can be custom made to your seating requirements. Lederet is easy to clean and sanitize and a better choice during the COVID pandemic. For fast and comfortable shopping, visit us to get the best prices in town. Ravina's and Water Street and Anand's and Regent Street. For all the Zoom hashouts and recipe tryouts, the world changed and we were right there. Standing with you, always near, getting closer in so many ways, laughing together as we face these days. And because we are Caribbean, we've got a special insight that tells us there's no need to worry, world. We'll be all right. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Saul Guyana Inc. Welcome back. The two GRA customs officers who were held as part of the probe into the cocaine and scrap iron bust have been released from custody, but they now have to report regularly to the Customs Anti Narcotics Unit. The more than 11 tons of cocaine was found in Belgium in a shipment of scrap iron from Guyana. The container was packed mostly with parcels of cocaine. The customs officers were held because they were the ones who operated the scanners on the day that the shipment was loaded here in Guyana. There was an initial request to keep them in custody for additional time, but when that time expired, a decision was taken to release them. Several images that would have been taken as a container moved through the scanner were deleted from the scanning system, according to the investigators. Efforts to retrieve those images have failed. Head of Kanu James Singh today said the search is still ongoing for the shipper of the container Marlon Primo. A wanted bulletin was issued for his arrest. The businessman has not been heard from or seen since the bus took place and Kanu believes he may be out of the country. Local investigators have been working along with the DEA office in Guyana and the Belgium officials on the 1 billion US dollar bust, which the Belgium authorities have described as the largest overseas bust in its history. The shipment left Guyana in September, and based on the amount of cocaine found in the container, investigators are convinced that several players in the local drug on the world may have been involved in the shipment. Turning now to the energy sector, U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil intends to continue exploration in the Kaitro block offshore Guyana, although its first discovery there has been deemed non-commercial. The discovery was made at a Tanisher 1 well, but turned out to be of no commercial value unlike the discoveries in the nearby Stabrook block. In a statement today, Public and Government Affairs Advisor at ExxonMobil Guyana, Janelle Prasad, explained that Exxon will be evaluating data from the well as it moves on to other exploration activities in the area. Tanager 1, which is the first well in the Kaichur block offshore Guyana, did encounter hydrocarbons, but based on initial analysis, it does not appear to be economic on a standalone basis. 
We will continue to evaluate the data we've gained through additional tests and analysis, and we'll continue exploration activities across our acreage offshore Guyana, including in the high-risk frontier areas such as the Kaichur and Kanji blocks. The Tanager Exploration 1 well is the deepest well drilled in the Guyana Suriname Basin to date. It was dug using the Stenacarin drill ship and reached a total depth of 7,633 meters. The Kaichur block is currently operated by Exxon Mobil subsidiary Exxon Production and Exploration Guyana Limited with a 35% stake. Partners in the block area Catalia Energy and Ratio which have 25% each while Hess holds the remaining 15%. A 42-year-old man from Region 4 is Guyana's 140th coronavirus-related death. The man passed away yesterday while being a patient at a medical institution. In the first four months of the pandemic in Guyana, only 21 deaths were recorded. But in the last three and a half months, that death toll has jumped by 119. October is so far the deadliest month for the pandemic in this country, with 44 deaths being recorded in those 31 days of October. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health reported today that 16 new cases of the coronavirus have been recorded in Guyana. It is the lowest number of new cases recorded for the past few weeks. There are still 810 active coronavirus cases in the country, with 710 of those persons in home isolation. The opposition believes that a large number of positive cases allowed to isolate at home is contributing to the ongoing spread since enough systems are not in place to ensure that those persons are actually following the guidelines while isolated at home. Well, with the lockdown remaining in place with two medical teams on the ground, a total of 41 persons who were tested positive for coronavirus in the indigenous community of St. Cuthbert's Mission have recovered from the disease. More than 200 other residents remain in isolation. The Mahika River Village started to see a sudden spike in COVID-19 cases two weeks ago. Within a few days, the number of cases jumped to more than 100, forcing health officials to order a complete lockdown of the community and put the medical team in place. Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony today said most of the cases at St. Cuthbert's Mission are without symptoms. He noted that additional tests are still being done in the village with just over 1,500 persons. And so far, as you know, we have, we have 239 confirmed cases. Um, we have done some swabbing yesterday. We are going to get back those results sometime today. And um, we anticipate that we will have some increases. Uh, aside from that, um, a little bit of good news with St. Cuthbert's is that while we have been monitoring our patients, um, we were able to discharge at least about 41 persons um, who have since had the disease, met the criteria, they were asymptomatic for the past 10 days, and now we have discharged them. So the numbers would go down slightly, but uh, we'll still have a number of cases as we continue to test. A total of 239 cases of COVID-19 were recorded in the past two weeks in the village of St. Cuthbert's Mission. As part of the lockdown measures, the Ministry of Health team that is now based there has been walking around from door to door to probe possible other cases. St. Cuthbert's Mission, we continue to monitor the situation. As I said, we have a permanent presence medical presence that is at St. Cuthbert's. We have two doctors, we have a number of nurses uh, that have gone there and have stayed there and would be there for the duration of uh, the lockdown. Uh, the nurses and the doctors have been doing a house-to-house -house kind of uh, assessment. The health minister said the medical team posted in St. Cuthbert's mission is well equipped to deal with the situation there. The team will remain in place until the lockdown is over in that community. The Guyana police force is this evening investigating an alleged mining pit accident which resulted in the death of 26-year-old Errol Ramit, also known as Tushi, a pork knocker from Port Kaituma. The accident took place on the 15th of November. According to a police statement, at around 2.30 in the afternoon, the victim was in a mining pit operating a Maroc engine when a piece of land slid and covered him. His workmates immediately started digging, which took them about an hour to get the body out, and they observed that he was motionless. 
The police were summoned to the scene and they responded and immediately commenced investigations. The man's body was taken to the Port Kaituma Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. A post-mortem examination is to be carried out. Across the region is coming up next. Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. And now is our time a time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Across the region right now, a powerful hurricane has brought torrential rains and strong winds to Nicaragua's Caribbean coast, two weeks after another devastating storm hit the country. Iota made landfall as a Category 4 storm near the bottom of Puerto Cabezas, where patients had to be evacuated from a makeshift hospital after its roof was ripped off. Residents are in shelters and there are fears of food shortages. The storm has weakened and Honduras is expected to be hit later today. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said Iota was now a Category 2 storm, but warned it could bring life-threatening storm surges, catastrophic winds, flash flooding, and landslides. Iota struck Nicaragua on Monday evening with sustained winds of nearly 155 miles per hour. Peru's Congress has elected a new interim president, the country's third head of state, in less than a week. Congressman Francisco Sagasti, a 76-year-old engineer and academic, will lead the country until the presidential election next year. Last week, President Martin Vizcarra was impeached over bribery allegations, which he denies, a move that sparked protests across the country. At least two people were killed and many were injured during those protests. Mr. Sagasti was elected leader after securing the minimum 60 votes required. He belongs to the only party that voted against the impeachment of Mr. Vizcarra last week. 
Mr. Sagasti has taken over from Manuel Marino, the former Speaker of the Congress, who became interim president following the impeachment of Mr. Viscara. Mr. Marino had been in the post for less than a week when protesters and politicians called for his resignation, following a violent crackdown on demonstrations against him. Tens of thousands of demonstrators, many of them young, took part in the protests against Mr. Viscara's removal from office. And finally tonight, international news. Kenya's government has ordered an investigation into the theft and sale of babies following an investigation by the BBC into the black market trading. The announcement came after BBC Africa Eye revealed that children were stolen to order from a Nairobi public hospital. A hospital official used the legitimate paperwork to take custody of a two-week-old boy before selling him directly to an undercover reporter. A government minister said the culprits would face the full force of the law. Addressing a packed press conference in Nairobi, the Labour and Social Protection Minister Simon Shalugi said that both the sellers and buyers were equally culpable. Flanked by top police officials, Mr. Shalugi promised a thorough investigation into the issue. The investigation by BBC Africa Eye uncovered a trade in children stolen from vulnerable mothers living on the street, as well as the existence of illegal clinics dotted around Nairobi, where babies were being sold for as little as £300. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.